a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Printed Props Workshop. Today we're going to be going through the Hu Yang bust build, so without any further ado, let's get to it. So as we start launching into the time lapse for this, I just want to go through some of my thoughts as this was going ahead. First of all, this was an enormous build, and I don't mean in size, I mean in time. Every single piece of this, because there was multiple filament swaps in each one, was 10, 12, 15, 16, 18, 20 hours. The, the helmet, the actual final piece of the helmet, took three days. It was that long on my bamboo, which says a lot because that printer's bloody fast in the first place. So having it take that long was something pretty major. Now, mercifully, I found a G-code that allowed me to minimize the amount of filament wastage because the bamboo, by default, is a very, very wasteful printer. It does a lot of purging when it probably doesn't need to. So finding this G-code on Maker World, which is bamboo's own thingiverse, printables, whatever you want to call it, it was a game changer because it literally saved about 45% of the filament on every single purge. Which when you're dealing with things that are taking 30 hours in some cases, which was what the helmet was supposed to take before it kept jamming, you're looking at a lot of wastage. And if you can minimize 45% per filament swap, that's a lot because that 30 hour piece probably had somewhere in the region of 1500 to 2000 filament swaps. So you're purging a lot just to get to the colors that you need for the next layer. Now for anyone that's interested, I will leave a link in the description to that exact G-code file so that if anyone has a bamboo, be it an X1, P1P, A1, A1 Mini, whatever, he has the person has literally put out filament swap G codes for every single version. Then you can download it, you can apply it. I, I had to do a little bit of work because I have a lot of custom profiles already. So I had to kind of apply the G code that he created to my existing print profile rather than creating a new one, which is what he recommends doing in creating a new one so that you don't have any g-code issues but if you know what you're doing then it's pretty straightforward to just kind of jump in and get it get it done so with regards to the file itself this again is from marco over at mystery makers this was a patreon exclusive that he produced and it's absolutely amazing again i have a great relationship with marco overall and I feel that his models are absolutely amazing. He clearly puts a lot of work into trying to figure out the best way to design them, but also the best way to make them look good. And honestly, that combination is greatly appreciated because there are some people out there that produce models that look absolutely unreal. They look realistic, they look fantastic, they look amazing when they're sitting on a shelf but getting them printed can be a real pain. And Marco seems to have met that great middle section of good looking models whilst not also being an impossibility to print. So as we start to wrap up the time lapse with the final piece, which was the dome top of the helmet, you can see that Overall, it was coming out really, really, really good. Like, the printer was in beast mode, to be perfectly honest. It was making everything look perfect, which is what I needed. Ah, uh, the assembly stage. So this is where everything started going a little bit wrong. Not tremendously at this point, but it certainly didn't go to plan. I'll say that much. The first parts went together really easily, as you'll see in the video as we're doing it now. I apologise that it was a, li a little off-centre, I do correct it after a few moments, um, but this first section will be a little bit cut off. So, as I'm assembling the neck, 
Everything's going together perfectly. No problem there. Head fits without a problem. We're absolutely motoring on. We're making great progress. I'm at the minute I'm looking at doing the ears before I do the neck so that the neck has a little bit more time to glue. So you'll see me, I'll pick up the ears in a second and we'll glue those on. And then I did the two almost like mandible pieces below the chin, which they were already starting to give me a little bit of trouble. They didn't really bond properly for one thing and I had to go back and correct it afterwards. But at this point, we were just dealing with the ears and the mandibles and I was like okay you know what ears and mandibles they're minor pieces I can deal with that we can figure it out we'll work from there and we won't have a problem you know I was wrong I'm not really sure at what point things really started going awry with this, but it seems like a little bit of it was something to do with the tolerances of the things that I'd printed. Now, I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours printing out flow rates and pressure advance tests and everything for all of my different filaments. So every single filament I have on that printer is calibrated to its correct settings. So I figure that in some point with this, I maybe had a little bit of flow rating issues that I've yet to go back and correct because certain parts were really, really tight. I think the biggest issue seemed to be with the um, khaki filament that I'd used for the droid body because it just seemed a little snug in places. And I think maybe I'd not got the correct flow rating on it so I'm probably going to have to go back and double check that again. You can see me sizing things up to see if things fit properly and for the most part they did but then when it came to like the actual face and the domed top to the helmet itself they were just a little off. When it came to the eyes Marco had designed this in a couple of different ways. You could either print out a piece of filament and then put LEDs behind it so that they would glow or you could use glow in the dark filament. Now initially I'd purchased glow in the dark filament for this but in the end I opted to just use a metallic yellow filament because I thought that that was maybe going to work just as well and I don't actually regret it you know it's it's come out looking really nice with just the metallic yellow filament. Like when the when the light catches the yellow, it just comes off looking really good, like it's actually glowing. So I have no problems with that. I didn't want to do LEDs simply because of the fact that I didn't want to have to keep taking the eyes out to fix the LEDs all the time. So the problems that I was having really started to get worse as I put together the face mask, as you'll start to see now. I already had issues at this point with the cheeks not actually adhering to the mask properly, so I decided to remove those and try and work on it afterwards. So at this point, I'm pushing the face mask in. What I don't realize is that I haven't actually pushed it all the way in. It's kind of dropping in and out. You can see me muttering a lot and cursing it out and trying to figure out how I'm going to do it because it's starting to give me trouble. It's not that it was badly designed, it's just that I had, again because of the tolerance issues, I think I was starting to have problems with it. And I tried fitting the cheeks before I put the mask on the face, which I I think was the biggest part of the problem that I had there because in the end it was like trying to climb to the second floor of a house when you didn't actually have the stairs in place. So this was the point where I started to realise that I had issues with it shall we say. The lid of the helmet would fit on but it was very tight. Now I have a little trick when I do my gluing where I don't put a ton of glue everywhere. I put the glue on the very edges of where I'm going to push it onto and then let pressure move it in the rest of the way. 
So you'll see here I'm trying to push it in and I'm getting it down, but there's a gap that I can't quite figure out. There's a gap between the top of the nose and the helmet. And no matter how hard I try to push it down, it's not going anywhere. And it's very, very, very tight. Like the tolerances on this piece were very, very tight. So you know what, start hitting it, that, that might work. Which it didn't, obviously. Now I'm trying to get it off. And of course it's so tight that it's not coming off. So yeah, I'm getting frustrated, very frustrated. Now I'm no trying to get it off again. So now it comes off and we have a look again. Clean up the edges, try again. Push it on, push it down. It's fitting, but it's just not sitting flush. And then obviously this time it gets even worse. And coming up in just a couple of seconds time is where everything goes very wrong. And there we go. So in the end, persistence paid off. I walked away and then came back a little later to try and figure it out. And it turned out that the actual problem was the face mask was not level. So when I leveled the mask, it closed the gap. Now I'm also having problems here, as you see, with the monocle. It just wants to keep falling down. So I had to fight with that for a little bit as well. So when it came to the eyes, I wanted to try and avoid getting glue everywhere again. So I used the same tactic of just putting a bit of glue on the very ends. And then when I pushed it in, it would basically smear that glue around. Now again, this is a very tight fit, as you can see. And uh, I had to kind of push that around a little bit to get it in. But in the end, it went in okay. So in the end, this was nothing against Marco's files at all. The issues that I was having was all down to the calibration of the filament that I had, which obviously I thought I'd done a good calibration on it, but I have a feeling my flow ratings were whacked out. But with it all said and done, it still looks absolutely amazing in the end, and I'm really happy to have it in my collection now. I hope you guys like it too. Let me know what you think below. And until next time, may the force be with you.